Hey guys, Shaggy here, right? Yay, genius. If you're wondering what my upload was yesterday, I've been extremely busy over the past couple of days testing out all the muscle cars to see how quick they can go around the track to see what sort of lap times they're getting for the optimal best. Now, here's the thing, man. I did mention a couple videos ago that I wasn't going to actually test these cars out until Rockstar fixes the turbo upgrade because obviously right now it's currently broken. And they haven't even responded about it on Twitter but all of the freaking retweets and all of this. I'm not sure that but they like to freaking retweet Snapmatics. I mean, tell me about it. Snapmatics, the beautiful... Shut the fuck up, dickhead. Now, here's the thing, right? Here is the thing. All right? All I did was literally, all, for all these tests and all these cars, I've just gotten rid of the turbo upgrade. Everything else is the same. Everything else is fully customized. So, everything is fair. All these tests are fair. It's just these aren't, you know, actually the optimal times because we're missing the turbo upgrade. But, you know, you guys can get sort of the just the things with the order of the cars as to how fast they are how quick they are on the track but all, everything's tested everything is fair it's just we're missing the turbo upgrade that is actually not broken that we're waiting for but on these tests like i said the turbo has been completely um, removed for all these cars but uh, also the uh, tires are not off-road they're muscles so the muscle tires are on for every single one of these uh cars as well when I tested them so the traction and the way the car responds is all natural and like they should so everything is fair guys so now that we got that, that out of the way I'm extremely tired from all this testing I've had poor sleep schedule over the past few weeks but I'm here I'm still alive and here's the thing alright for those of you that can't be asked to watch the entire length of the video Within the description, I've put links to the times of the positions for each of these muscle cars without spoiling it, without putting the names and the, of the positions of the cars. So you guys can check them out for yourselves if you're not interested in the footage of the lap times and the optimal bests. So, it's kind of crazy with this result. It's kind of surprising as well. Obviously, a um, lot, of, lot of the times you got to understand that the way the cars work may not be suited for the particular track that I'm testing on. And might be better for another track because of the performance or top speed. So a lot of the times, yes, I do understand this particular track that I chose to test on is quite a technical. A lot of corners, quite a few tight corners as well, curvy bends. Um, not necessarily great for the cars with you know crazy top speed, but it's got a nice element of balance of everything. You know, uphill straight, downhill straight into the bridge or so into the tunnel. But the point is. Um, I've chosen a track where it tests everything to a certain extent and it's rather short as well. I don't want to use a track where uh, it would be over two minutes otherwise it would be rather difficult to get consistent you know quick lap times to test out everything completely. So I thought this was the best track to do it on. So remember like I said some of these cars would be quicker on another track or might be slow on another track but on the same track these are the results that I got. So the rat loader was quicker than the voodoo by 1.2 seconds that's crazy because when you first look at the rat loader before trying it you probably say to yourself okay well this is kind of self-explanatory it's going to be the slowest muscle car in the game but in fact it's not it's actually um the second slowest the voodoo is the slowest at the moment it's kind of crazy and to say that this is actually 1.2 seconds quicker than the slowest car is even more crazier because it's one of those things where it's like you don't you don't really expect it's kind of surprising right i was even quite surprised when i pulled off this lap time with this car because this is actually one fat motherfucker it's, it actually does it's one of the most stubborn cars in the game it's got absolutely poor handling it doesn't want to respond to your cornering right because it's got a poor turning circle that you literally have to break about half a mile before you approach a corner man the breaking point is so early that you, you literally have to respect the fact that if you do break early you are going to get quick times with it that's that's the basic the whole point of the rat loader it just doesn't want to turn and even when you're trying to turn early at high speeds it does have the tendency to oversteer and here you go at 12th position you have the hot knife again a 1 minute 46.202 it's got similar handling to the rat loader but a little bit more comfortable in predicting which you know, does make it slightly easier but still the handling and the feel of it is very awkward where you have to brake early and it's a lot to do with throttle control as well a lot of these curvy bends you know even if you get the throttle control wrong and let's say you, you, you lose too much you could lose a lot of speed due to throttle control you know you might let go of the throttle way too much 
and you could lose a lot of speed. So it's really you have to minimax and optimize through all these corners. And that's how I got these times, obviously. These are after doing multiple, multiple laps and breaking a few milliseconds every lap. So you get to a point where you can't break that time anymore. And these are sort of the times that I'm putting in here where for me personally, for my capabilities, I can't break these times any further. Of course, some of you might be able to do that, but that's through your driving experience and through your consistency. But anyway, the point is through my driving through all of these cars, these are the results that I've got. So the Hot Knife is a pretty awesome car, as you guys know, it's from the Collector's Edition. But Rockstar have made it available for everyone to purchase the new version of GTA 5. So yes, you can get the Chameleon, you can get the Hot Knife, and you can get the Carbon Iris motorbike. All of these are now purchasable and you can keep them. So it's awesome because I haven't actually driven this, right, properly. I have actually showcased this in the past, but thanks to someone else that had the Collector's Edition on the PS3. But now I can actually completely drive this up anywhere on my own will. And actually, I had the opportunity to test it, which I did obviously because it's part of the muscle category and came out with this result, which is awesome. It's a nice car, but it does have the force feel to it when you have to actually use it at optimal best, where you have to really focus and concentrate. But 11th position, we have the Picador, which got a lap time of 1 minute 45.706, which is interesting because rather similar to, it was pretty close uh, lap time to the Hot Knife, you know. Just beating it by, what, 0 0.5 seconds, 0 0.4 seconds. So it is it is rather close to the Hot Knife. So what, what would be interesting is to see multi-class racing between the Picador and uh, the Hot Knife. That would be really, really interesting to see that. But yeah, the Picador is a decent car. I mean, it's very, very easy to handle. Um, really, really predictable as well. It's really comfortable to drive as well. I, I quite like this car. You know, it's, it's suited to my driving style and really is really well balanced. You know, it doesn't oversteer at all and it doesn't even understeer at all. It's literally perfectly balanced between the two and it's so, so easy to control. Uh, only downside is the performance, hence the lap time. But you can consistently pull these times with ease without having to put that much focus and effort in. So, you know, the breaking points as you, it should be where it's kind of predictable. And the turning circle is there as well, you know. It's there, it's, it's, it's perfectly comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with this car, you know. I guess for the looks, some people might like it, some people might not. But other than that, it comes down to preference. Like I said, downside is performance. But it still does well, you know. Like, it's interesting to see because it's really, really close contender to the hot knife just about slightly beating it but for obvious reasons um, comfortability as well as consistency uh, you know the hot la the, the hot knife time was the absolute limit but to get those times with a hot knife is uh, rather difficult more difficult than getting the times with the picador that you see here so that's one thing to take into consideration so Right guys, at this point of the commentaries where the Phoenix was the 10th quickest in the previous video, which I made a mistake because I forgot to add a spoiler when originally testing it. So it wasn't actually my Phoenix on the GTA mode. I borrowed it off someone else. I thought they already had the spoiler. I did try to confirm. They did say, yeah, but it's actually my fault for not checking properly over the recording. Oh, so I managed to find my own Phoenix after taking down the previous version of the video. I uh, fully customized it, added a spoiler, of course, uh, not adding the uh, turbo and ended up going much quicker than expected it actually surprised me with the number of seconds I've gained just because of the spoiler by the way my apologies with the quality of this video for some reason the frames aren't smooth on the footage I think something to do with the capture card might need to purchase a new one a new version of Elgato I still got the older version or maybe I just need to update my drivers we'll see but it's just for this video only you can see it's not really smooth so I'll try to sort that out let me know if you guys get some problems if you guys got Elgato with that so, uh, yeah, 10th quickest is the Buccaneer, 139.166. And uh, throughout the, the 10th quickest to the 5th quickest, the commentary is going to be changed. And the rest will be the same as the previous video. So that's what you should expect. Because if I were to actually just replace the cars and keep the commentary the way it was, then it would have been kind of confusing because I would have been talking about different cars at different positions. Like I said, always um, links in the description below for the placements of the cars. Uh, you've probably already seen it in the start of the video, like I said. I mentioned in the previous commentary. This is actually two different commentaries, two different days in one video. So, uh, yeah, I just thought this would be the most convenient and to get the video out as quickly as possible. So, yeah, the Buccaneer, 
doesn't have spoiler edition, so it's going to stick to the original time as it should be. It does get a decent time, however. But the Vigero, ninth position, gets a 138.531. This is an awesome car. It does have a spoiler. Absolutely fun to drive with. Doesn't oversteer, doesn't understeer. You can literally control it with ease without any problems whatsoever. And uh, it's one of those cars, man. If it only had decent performance, you know, slightly better, it would definitely make it viable and competitive. It's so comfortable to drive with. It, feel, it reminds me of the Picador driving style where you can't really make mistakes with it and you can get consistent lap times. And you can consistently get 138s once you figure out the lines because uh, you can hardly, there's no room for mistakes with this car. You know, it literally drives for you, if that makes sense. It's so comfortable. It's, it's so responsive at high speeds as well. Literally turning left, right, it just does it for you. And the turning circle is amazing as well at high speeds, taking these corners with ease. The braking is also spot on. That's another thing that will help you with turning. Of course, getting your uh, late reacting um, braking point as well, just in case you do make a mistake. It's there to help you uh, compensate for that. Absolutely awesome car. Looks great as well. It sound, all the muscle cars sounds great, man. Um, there's only a few different changes to the frequency of each sound of these cars, but you can sort of notice it. It's blatantly obvious for certain cars being more more raw than others but um that, that's something that you know that's uh, like for me i haven't had used earbud in ages right like oh fucking earwax stuck in my fucking ears all the time so i gotta try and clean that shit out my man's kind of broke out it's still kind of need to go to tesco and buy some earbuds you know and i'm saying anyway the point is we'll see you right here the girl slapping a 138.531 with smooth lines as hell man so comfortable so easy and really it's just fun so that's ninth, but eighth quickest we have the gauntlet. Doesn't have a spoiler, and it's still representing the 137 club. Just about making it in there, scraping it with a spade. Now, literally, right, the 137.965 was the absolute limit that I could push push with this car, man. Uh, it does have the tendency to understeer a lot. Doesn't really oversteer, but it can oversteer if you're not paying attention to trying to push a corner way too hard. If it's a really tight corner, but yeah, mainly it does understeer, and it does suck. It doesn't have a Spoiler, but then again, that's, that's kind of expected with this car. Spoiler would kind of ruin it. Uh, but, you know, with the spoiler changes of ages ago, it completely changed the order. This used to be one of the quickers, actually. But now it's um, one, I guess, in the mid-tables of the rankings of muscles. It's still a fun car to drive. Definitely down to driving style, though. Because for those of you that prefer cars that oversteer and control cars with a responsiveness uh, cornering, uh, you won't like this. This is more for those that like uh, taking cars, appropriate braking points, and really um, optimizing the speed around corners without that much of responsiveness. Are really primarily focusing, sort of like how the Vapid Blade is, but this one um, not as rigid as that. Still does really, really well, uh, considering, like I said, no spoiler edition, sort of in the mid tables. And that's expected, you know. Gauntlet is an awesome car, man. And it's extremely. Um, fun to just drift around with and whatnot and you can do that and it really is down to controlling your revs and um, managing that properly but yet again this is another one of those cars throttle control is key like all of the muscle cars in this category man throttle control is the one that's going to get you these times so but yeah try this track out by the way link in the description below it's not, this is actually my track this is uh one of the guys from apex crew uh, it's an awesome track, you know, I would have never thought of this. I love the design of the tie lines on the outside to force you to stay onto the track. Uh, so no room for mistakes, you know, sort of like an F1 style track, really. But yeah, the uh, seventh quickest car in the muscle category is the Stallion. The Stallion actually uh, is the brand new car that we got from the new version of GTA 5 and the PS4, Xbox One. Uh, we should be getting on the PC as well. So it's awesome that this is quite high up in the rankings with the quickest type muscle cars. I thought initially looking at this, it's going to be really, really slow, but this is another one of those cars. It's got a similar driving style to the Gauntlet, but less rigid. It does have the tendency to understeer more than oversteer, but it's so easy to control at the same time. It does feel a little bit more responsive and more available with the turning circle to actually uh, carry a lot of speed around these curvy bends without having to ease too much of the throttle and really keep it in control. And we've taken smooth lines at high speeds and we can carry a lot of speed through these corners and the turning circle is not too bad i mean it doesn't have that much available but it's, it's slightly better than the gauntlet and it doesn't feel as rigid like i said so 
137.732 something that understandable because of the similar driving style to the going look but slightly more available from it so it's really nice to see these two together as uh, they don't have spoilers but if you were to do multi class racing with both these two the going and the stallion it should be interesting to see how people do uh, like i said you know slight difference between the two but you can really tell once you use both of them and feel the rigidness between them so yeah certainly stallion is slightly less rigid than the going and more comfortable to use if it comes to consistency so uh yeah phoenix here he comes that sixth position phoenix out of nowhere from 139.2 without the spoiler when slapping on the spoiler 136.729 people that is nearly slapping off four seconds right four bloody fat seconds just because of the spoiler what a stupid mistake by me but honestly that's absolutely crazy right i could not believe it at first when testing the first 10 laps I managed to pull off 137.399 but i said to myself hmm let me try push it a little even more let's see what the limit actually is and I managed to get a 136.729. Heck, you could even go quicker if you wanted to, depending on how good you are at driving. You might be better than me. You could probably get a 136 point, you know, low 136 maybe. Um, but, you know, there is a gap between this and the next car. You'll see. But I'm sure this car won't beat the next car, regardless how much you push it. There has to be a certain limit. But 136.729 was my personal limit with this car on this track and uh, nearly scraped off four seconds like i said from my previous attempt without the spoiler so you can see how much the spoiler makes a difference so we sort of can see the perspective from that between the two videos if you were to see the previous video before i removed it reason why i removed it is because i don't want to give you guys the wrong information of the cars and uh make me look stupid uh, in fact that, that was such a stupid mistake i shouldn't have done that i can't believe not a lot of people didn't notice that but uh yeah, I wouldn't have noticed that until I read the comments because uh, quite a few of you guys actually mentioned it, but not too many, though. It's crazy. But yeah, one face six point seven two nine, amazing lap time with the Phoenix there. That is number six, but number five, the Sabre Turbo. The one of the reasons why this has got you know one minute thirty six for point one six three is because of its handling. The handling. In my opinion, this has the best handling out of all the muscle cars in the game. Simply sticks like a glue on the ground, even taking corners at high speed. It doesn't want to oversteer or understeer. It just literally just glides through these corners with ease. Literally don't have to brake much, you know, throttle control all the way. And literally you can floor most of these curvy bends as well. And carry a lot of speed. I love this car absolutely awesome and deserves the spot and deserves i mean the time is this this car does seem a bit lonely with its time it gets a 136.163 but you know i i do i do like the fact that the comfortability is there and you can consistently pull these times i mean the tendency to oversteer is still there if you're not paying attention to it but if you're taking the optimal lines then there should not be a problem to it and this car it's absolutely awesome. It's got a lot of mods to it. It sounds great. It feels great. I'm getting to the point of the commentary where I'm extremely tired. So, even that little slight little overstay you noticed, because that little air time that I got, I can still recover easily. And it's funny because this is a, this was actually the quickest time. But you know, that that is where good times come when you actually do push every single corner to their limits. So, this car, wow, I, I'm actually so tired. You know when you're so tired, you start sweating? Yeah, one take productions, people. Now, the Ruiner, right? Ruiner makes it to the fourth spot, right? With a 135.296. It's got a spoiler. It's an awesome car. You know, it's got the feel of the Sabre Turbo, but not that responsiveness, you know? Not the turning circle that the Sabre Turbo has available. And it doesn't have the responsiveness that the table Turbo has. Sabre Turbo, <laughs> Turbo alright? But this car does have awesome handling. It, uh, it feels a little bit more heavier. You know, a little bit heavier than the uh, Sabre Turbo, right? But it still does its job. It's got it's got a great balance to it. It's really comfortable, you know, when you, when you use this. It's so 
It's, it's another one of those fun cars to drive. You can carry a lot of speed through these corners. And the braking is awesome as well. But you don't really need to brake that much with this car. All, you know, once again, a lot of these muscle cars come down to throttle control. A lot of throttle controls involved to minimax these corners and really push them. You know, get those milliseconds out there. Once you get all the combinations put together, you can really get some insane lap times. And you can really tell who's the, you know, who's that great driver who can actually use that car fully of another person that uses you can really tell apart you know, it's, it's a huge difference you can really tell as opposed to you know like let's say supercars you can a a anyone can get uh, a certain time quite easily once they combo you know put all the combos together because there's not much you can do with those cars than with these cars because there's a little bit more detail put into them through the way they work and the handling and performance and everything put together a little bit of that skill gap there as well so Rowan is at number four uh, I was just kind of expected but number three the Jukes I don't know it the brand new Jukes coming to GTA 5 from the previous GTA which is awesome coming into the top three spot with a 134.62 weight which is the time that I could pull off with the limit which is um, crazy because the Duke looks absolutely awesome. It's got an insane sound that it makes. It's uh, that sheer raw power. It's really, really comfortable. It reminds me of the handling of the Sabre Turbo, but slightly bigger. It's got a similar res responsiveness and turning circle to it. It's just got a better performance, it seems like. It can carry a lot of speed through these corners. The car feels great. It's so comfortable. And getting this lap time, man, I was quite surprised. I thought it's a the car within the 135s you know makes sense okay all right for trying it for the first few times and once once you actually push it you know you you see the difference of you know just really going for it man with 134 628 man it really does it makes this car a, comp a viable competitive car for racing certainly definitely because getting 134s you can get that consistently once you figure out the combinations because the car is quite easy to control does have the tendency to oversteer there and then but not too much if you're taking if you're not taking stupid lines but once you do figure out the viable lines and optimal times you can keep this car in control quite easily you know preventing all sorts of oversteer and it doesn't have require that much concentration as uh, some other cars in this category so that's not one thing you'll take into consideration absolutely awesome car man you gotta have it f and make it right it is viable for racing so that is certified. But a number two spot we have for this particular track anyway. We have the Dominator with 134.195. Which is only about, you know, 0.4 quicker than the uh, the Dukes. So, that's interesting, you know. This this obviously has the thing, bro. This, this lap time is extremely difficult to get consistently over the Dukes. And that is why I say the Dukes is awesome for racing because it doesn't require that much concentration. Or focus to actually uh, consistently go quick whereas the dominator on the other hand it's got an insane skill gap to the Dukes where it does require a lot of concentration and skill to consistently do well with this car that that is the difference of these lap times you know and that's the difference you know really mini maxim with this car of course you know it's, it's it's quicker than the Dukes but it's difficult it's more difficult to get these optimal times with this car of the Dukes. That, that's the difference. You know, really to get these lines and the braking points and the throttle control with the Dominator, you know, because of the simple fact that this, this car does have the tendency to oversteer and it's rather unpredictable. That's that's the difference, you know? And the comfortability is not there. But, you know, even like I said, once you figure out the right combinations, it's very, very difficult to put every single corner together into one lap because one something can go completely wrong from just one corner which you you think you've got it right but it can go completely wrong at any point of that corner because of the way this car works and the way the handling is got a heavy heavy car and one one mistake can completely ruin it for you guys so number one spot for this particular track anyway the blade came out on top simply because of its sheer power coming from that acceleration right which makes you able to carry a lot of speed through these corners um, 
with, with ease like I said acceleration absolutely crazy so you get that and once you get the braking point right then everything else is just you're carrying uh, as a backpack on your shoulders with all that speed and momentum you get through the acceleration this car is insanely quick obviously track dependent so it's quite close with the Dominator and it really is a completely different driving style to the Dominator this car understeers a lot literally no oversteer whatsoever right whereas the Dominator oversteers a lot but hardly understeer I mean Dominator does have quite a bit of understeer to it if you think about it when you're carrying a lot of speed around a curvy bend but then the oversteer kicks in if you are you know being too lazy but this car is completely different all right this is where one could simply argue if you are a dominator fan this car takes no skill this and that because you're merely just focusing on a breaking point rather than a handling perspective whereas dominator everything's involved with breaking point as well as the handling and throttle control whereas this is mainly just breaking point and that's it there's no real throttle control involved uh, there is to a certain extent but not as much as dominator and it's merely just uh you know carrying that acceleration speed throughout every corner so that is pretty much the order of all the muscle cars that we have at the moment for playstation 4 gt5 the new version gt5 without turbo upgrade basically so hopefully you guys found this video useful uh hopefully you guys understood what i was saying i am extremely tired so i'm not sure what i was saying for the most of that but you know it is what it is i'm talking to you to talking to you guys for experience of using these cars recently and i uh, i thoroughly enjoyed it muscle car certainly is quite a tight group of cars where you know there's a lot of skill involved to maximize them and racing now with the jukes is certainly viable and and the stallion is quite high up there in the listing as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed it like i said if you did be sure to slap the like button i'd be greatly appreciate it i'll see you guys soon subscribe for more gta 5 content check your sign out good night peace yeah Hey guys, are you here, Ray? Hey, yeah, G unit. So, Bruffy made a video, he tested out all that.